Yeah, I want Timmy and your assistant. I guess the incumbent goes first to give away the secrets. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the elder, Yawa, for doing the opening this evening. Um, I'd also like to congratulate the existing council for the work that they've done over the past three years. It's been quite a challenge. I think everyone knows who I am, but in case you don't, my dad was Mike DeLille Sr. My mom is Grace Hemlock. I'm married to Terry Horn. We have three mostly great children most of the time. Another challenge that's always presented to uh, a father. Um, tonight, I, I think, is more about what needs to happen in the future than what's happened in the past. I realize that we face many challenges. A lot of the issues have been discussed tonight. Uh, there'll be, I'm sure, lots of questions. There's been a couple pointed toward me, and, and I'll be willing to address those as we move forward in the evening. But uh, I want to address a couple of things. Um, someone mentioned earlier that it's become this unified here in the community. We see it as council, we hear it, we hear about it. I'm not a Facebooker, but we read about it and things are forwarded to us. And I think it's gone beyond being ununified, disunified or whatever else. It's becoming about hatred. And that's not who we are as a people. That's not who we're supposed to be. And I hope in the future it ends. It's not about a personality, it's not about a person, it's about the job that that person is doing. I don't take things personally, but my family does, and it's not right, it's not about being fair, because as a public official, you open yourself up to that, and I completely understand and appreciate that. But I think as Ganawagirono, as someone who lives here, as someone who lived here their whole life, and continues to have the passion to do what's right for this community, I don't think it's right. Not talking again about fairness. Um, my dad told me a long time ago that don't look for fairness because it doesn't exist. I tell my children that and they give me that usual face, sometimes even in a text with a long mouth and the two little eyes. But <laughs> it, it, it's just disheartening. And I think, again, that's why I'm congratulating the existing council because I've been here for maybe what some people feel is too long of a time, first elected on council in 1998, elected as Grand Chief in 2004. But Times have changed, and uh, I won't say in essentially for the better. I think the challenges that this past council and probably the two previous councils as well have faced have been more daunting than things in the past. We're still blamed for the seaway. Granted, broad shoulders will take the responsibility. Funding issues continues to continue to be an issue for everyone. I'm not going to talk to you tonight about uh, cutbacks and so on. It's a reality. Uh, Lloyd mentioned earlier the existence of the for the first time, long time, um, majority government, and I don't call them conservatives, I call them reformists, and to me the difference is that they are what I guess you could consider rednecks in Canadian political society. Um, they'll do everything to ensure that, never mind Gunawage or Gunawage Ono or the Mohawk Nation, uh, First Nations rights are extinguished as quickly as possible. I don't believe it's ever going to happen here. I, I think we're much stronger than that. I think we need to be more unified. I believe that we need to have as much focus, if not more so, and try to set priorities for this community. We spend a lot more time putting out fires, criticizing each other, and, and bringing that hatred to a new level versus actually spending the amount of time necessary to deal with, whether it be taxation, whether it be the scenery of Sault Ste. Louis, 300-year-old grievance. Lots of issues, and I've seen and heard, I think most of them that have been forwarded to me as the uh, lead negotiator on it, criticized, slow, uh, a lot of other things that have and have not happened at the table. Um, maybe I take too many of the traits from my mother in terms of patience and others. Maybe I need to be more aggressive in terms of some of the things my dad would do or, or would say, and, and I still miss that type of approach and, and some of the words that he would share with me. But I think we do listen to the community. I believe that the community does have council's interest and vice versa in mind when it comes forward. But I'm here tonight to send that message. I, I would like to see that we maybe not become unified. We're not unified at the table. Uh, that, and I think that's healthy. We need to have debate, healthy debate, respectful, constructive debate in and around the community. And I don't see that happening. We, uh, I hope I'm not the only one sweating in here. But we, we, we've tried many different things. We see it happen at community meetings. We see it happen at the council table. We see it happen in public forums, whether it be this one or other ones that we participate in in the community. And again, I, I don't think it's healthy. I, I think we need to be able to look at who we are, what we believe in, and, and try and do the best for this community. 
That's why I'm here. I believe that everybody sits on, that sits on council presently has the same mindset. I believe that the people that are looking to become and our candidates today and tonight uh, have the same type of mindset as well. Um, but without that collective interest in mind, and I think that's another thing that's been missing, a lot of individual goals, aspirations, uh, and manipulation, I'll even call it, comes into play at time when people step forward, peoples step forward, groups of people step forward with council and say, you have to do this. Well, we'd like to do everything, I think, that people come forward with in terms of council. Uh, and I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it's nearly impossible. You could ask the incumbents who are sitting here, you can ask staff who deal with a lot of the intake, and the community's demands are huge. And I think I'm still, I believe, not think, that I'm still up for that type of challenge and the future challenges that come to this community. I'd like to wish everyone here uh, not only good health, but uh, good luck in the upcoming election. It's not only about that respect factor that's been missing, uh, and I can talk about individual files, but uh, I think those will come into questions. I'm, I'm prepared to defend the decisions that we've made in the past three years and for myself beyond that. Uh, I don't second guess. Um, I take into collaboration and consideration everything that's said at the table and in and around the community. I think we do hear the voice, but it's a lot of that individual aspect and determination and demands that I think burden the rest of the community with the, term, uh, the allotment of time that goes into every file that we do. Uh, I, I'd like to see uh, a lot more progression on Senior Reefer 1, but several of the files that we deal with, KCR and CKR, uh, sorry, QKR and KCR that we're dealing with Quebec and Canada with right now, but it's very difficult again, uh, dealing with the criticism first and foremost, and still wanting to be able to go to work every day with the same passion that you carry. Um, I'll address the rest of them through the questions as well. Uh, like I said, I've been the chief for the last eight years. I want to do so even further. I still carry that passion with me. Uh, I want to wish everybody as the incumbents and the candidates good luck. I wanna wish Barry good luck, but I can't because I still wanna do this work. Uh, it's not about a job, it's about a responsibility and I think I carry it well. Now go.